All right, this is Mark Egan doing a video report on the progress of my senior project. The first thing I wanted to do was to test some orifice plates of varying throw sizes for a few reasons. First of all, to see if I could confirm that the flow was indeed choked. Second of all, to see whether the raised chamber pressure due to the smaller throw sizes would produce more thrust. And third of all, to see how the steel would react. The biggest thing to note here is that the average thrust is about 1.4 pound force for a reservoir pressure of 125 psi. It's a pretty standard flow. You can see the thrust curve there, which is pretty textbook. Remember the exhaust plume because you'll be able to compare it with the exhaust plume with the nozzle later on. The second run I'm going to show you had a throat diameter much, much smaller than the one that's currently being used. The current one that's being used is 0.18 inches. This throat diameter is 0.148 inches and it produced slightly more thrust at 1.48 pound force. Again, it's a pretty standard burn. And there you have the thrust curve. Here you can see the post-burn orifice. Uh, the, the discoloration due to the heat is obvious, but the surprising thing is that the geometry didn't change at all, which is a good thing because it means that we don't have to ship out for any graphite nozzles and we can do the machining ourselves. But it is a little bit surprising because the melting temperature of steel is only about uh, 2500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is usually lower, quite a bit lower than most uh, rocket flows. So for the two runs shown here, we're getting an average uh, thrust of about 1.4 to 1.48 pound force for an O2 reservoir pressure around 125 psi gauge, or about 136 psi actual. Here's the first test nozzle that I machined. From this drawing from SolidWorks, you can see a couple of things that are, are pretty important. First of all, it's a 12 and a half degree half angle, which is pretty small, so you're getting a uh, close to isentropic flow. Second of all, the throat diameter is 0.15 inches, which is the same, roughly the same throat diameter as the smallest orifice plate we tested. Third of all, the exit area to throat area ratio is 5.44, which is seriously overexpanded for the, the conditions that we have. An optimally expanded throat to exit ratio would be around 1.5 for the pressures that we were getting from the orifice plates. So again, it's Seriously overexpanded, but that should allow us to see some shock diamonds and things, so that's that's okay. Okay, here you can see a couple of pictures of the test fixture. The final fixture will be able to quickly swap out nozzles, so that'll be nice. Okay, the first run has an average thrust of 1.58 pound force for roughly the same reservoir pressure as the orifice cases. This is an increase of 10% over the best orifice case. All right, so you see the the propane kick off and the oxygen kick on. And first of all, the flow is a lot tighter, which is nice. You also see some sputtering going on, and I'll try to explain that later. But uh, thrust curve right here, the dip in it is, I think, from holding the propane on too long. The spike is from flipping the oxygen on. It's a pretty standard thrust curve, I suppose. It was a pretty short burn time. All right, and the second run here had an average thrust of 1.73 pound force, which is a 20% increase over the best orifice case. And according to Sutton, that's about as good as you're gonna get without making any other changes besides the nozzle. You can almost see the shock diamonds there, not quite, but uh, again, you see the sputtering, and the sputtering I think is mainly caused by the fact that the nozzle was slightly misaligned with the axis of the fuel grain port, and that was causing some uh, flow instability and things. Pretty, pretty standard thrust curve, setting those things aside. The last burn shown here had uh, an average thrust of 1.57 pound force, which is still a 10% increase over the best orifice case. Now I'm just going to show you clips from it, but this was one of the funnest runs because I took the time to zoom in and you can actually see the, the shock times thanks to the sputtering going on. You wouldn't normally be able to see those. Now the sputtering, as you can tell, is getting kind of severe here, and I think that that, again, is due to misalignment of the nozzle. It also might be 
due to the fact that this was a much longer burn um, because most of the sputtering you saw toward the end of the burn and the increased volume was fooling around with the pressure creating creating weird things I, I'm not exactly sure but uh, I'll figure it out you can see the combustion going on in the in the chamber it's pretty cool All right, and here's the post-burn nozzle. You can see the discoloration due to the heat of the flow, but again, the geometry wasn't changed at all, which is awesome because, again, we don't have to send out for um, you know, a graphite nozzle or whatever. And here the runs are compared. Notice the pretty consistent ISPs, except for the exception of the last run. Um, also notice the decreasing O2 to fuel ratios. I'm, I'm not really sure what's causing that. I don't really trust it. I think something weird might be going on with the sonic nozzle inside the, the oxygen line. But at, at the worst case, it had a 10% increase in thrust using the nozzle over the simple orifice. Alright, that uh, concludes the first of my video reports.